Yeah. So look, I, I look. I think that the Alzheimer's is a, is an important one um, because Alzheimer's disease, well, is is a, a growing problem in our health systems. We've got an aging population in most countries in the world, uh, and so Alzheimer's is increasing in in many of those countries. Now, the the if if we just take a step back, there, there are. Um, environmental risk factors for Alzheimer's disease and there are genetic risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. One of the major genetic risk factors is a gene called APOE. And so you can be, you can have a, an APOE2 allele or a, an APOE3 allele or an APOE4 allele. So there are three different variants of this particular um, or this particular mutation or variant in the APOE gene. If you are APOE4, you have about a three to four fold increased risk of developing Alzheimer's. If you compare to the E3 allele, if you have an APOE2 allele, you're about half as likely to develop Alzheimer's. So you have a reduced risk. So what we were able to do in some of our larger studies is say which lipids are associated with the E4 and the E2 alleles. So we look at, you know, a thousand people, some have an E4 allele and we ask, you know, what are the level of levels of plasmalogens in people who have the APOE4 allele? What we see is that people with the APOE4 allele, and so increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, have lower levels of plasmalogens. People with the APOE2 allele, have higher levels of plasmalogens. So the this this uh, you know the this relationship between the APOE genetic risk factors and plasmalogens in circulation seem to agree with the concept that that plasmalogens and and this is a lifelong exposure because it's a genetic risk factor. So people with a lifelong exposure to low levels of plasmalogens have a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. And if they have higher levels, they've got a decreased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Now, we then went on within this study to do what's called a mediation analysis. And that's where we really ask, is the relationship between the APOE2 allele, in this case, and the decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease, is that mediated by the plasmalogens in circulation? And what we saw was that yes, it is mediated by plasmalogens in circulation, and that mediation can explain about 30, 35% of the protective effect of the APOE2 allele. Okay, so now we're getting to the point where we're starting to see evidence for a causal role of plasmalogens to protect against, in this case, Alzheimer's disease. Could you talk a little bit more about the mediation. I'm trying to understand how you determine that the plasmalogens are mediating the difference and, and then come up with this 30% number. It, it's, a, it's a complicated um, statistical analysis. Um, I have to say that, that it's we have a group of bioinformaticians in my lab that do all of this analysis, but but essentially you can you can measure a direct association between the APOE and the outcome, in this case, Alzheimer's disease. And then you can add into that um, regression model, you can add in the, the, the plasmalogens and see whether the plasmalogens offset some of the direct effect. And, and so you can get an estimate of the mediation effect of the plasmalogens in that situation. So I think there have been some uh, interventional trials with plasmalogens as well. Have any of these looked at Alzheimer's or neuro, other neurodegenerative diseases? Um, I, look, I, I think there's been a couple um, where they've used, I, and I think this might you might be referring to some of the the shellfish plasmalogen type products um, where they and they might have looked at, at cognitive outcomes. Um, I'm not I'm not sure about uh, those trials that they. 
generally small. Uh, they're generally using fairly low levels of plasmalogens in the in the diet in terms of the level of supplementation. So it, it, you know it's it's hard to see um, how they've you know whether I, I guess it's you know the the validity the validity of those types of studies I think relies on being able to reproduce them. And I think we need an, a number of additional studies where where we can reproduce the effects of the, that type of dietary supplement, particularly in a in a field as complex as as neurodegeneration, where you're measuring cognitive decline and and you you know there's a a lot of variation in those measurements. So we've still got a long way to go, I think, before we can say, All right, yeah, plasmalogen supplementation that's going to be you know, the solution or at least part of the solution to um, Alzheimer's disease or other neurodegenerative diseases. Now, that's not to say that, that that isn't going to, you know, evolve into that story, but but it's going to take a, quite a few much larger studies and, and more, you know, uh, more controlled studies, I think, to get sufficient evidence to support that. Okay, so at the moment, what we can say is that it's uh, it, it seems to be in some way causal and it is correlated with Alzheimer's, but um, we haven't really seen that supplementing with plasmalogens helps in, in helps particularly. Yeah, look, we need we need you know um, larger studies with hard endpoints. I think in that space. Mm. 